Welcome back to the channel guys and just look we've got the sun we've got a bit of water but it's a beautiful beautiful day I mean look at that scenery look at that countryside what could improve that view well here it is it's the new Ducati Diavel V4 a bike which is causing a little bit of a buzz at the moment and for very very good reason set yourselves down Put your feet up, grab yourself a cup of something warm because I'm going to tell you all about this new Diavel and even though it looks similar to the old one, this bike is worlds apart from the old Diavel. Let's do it. Let's get red and raw. <laughs> Chopsy, love the intro. In 2023, the Diavel has been completely overhauled. I don't think there's any shared components with the old version of the Diavel. This thing is 100% new, using the new 90-degree V4 Gran Turismo engine from the Multistrada. Uh, the, the V twin is gone. This is, you know, it's everything around. It's different. It's no, no longer got trellis frame. It's all the monocoupe, you know, for which originated on the Panigale. Uh, you know, it's still got these big snorkels. Oh, this thing is just amazed me. I absolutely love this bike. So we will stop and do a full walk around of this bike at some point. But I mean, just look at how cool the back lights are. It's like little insectoid b holes which uh, which is the tail light and brake light and if you've got the trypophobia fear of little holes then uh, you may not like that but it looks so cool but anyway let's jump on we will do a walk around and we'll cover all the details but let's ride the bloody thing <laughs> And we're off. Oh, this bike. There's, there's every now and again a bike comes along, which sort of blows your mind a little bit. I mean, it doesn't happen that often. You know, I ride a lot of motorcycles, and sometimes a bike comes out, and you like the look of it. You you watch the launch reviews, and you think, mm, I like the look of that. I wonder what it's like. This was one of those bikes which I was really interested in because I love, you know, I love the idea of a cruiser. I love the Rocket 3. You've probably seen my Rocket 3 video I did the other week. I absolutely love the Rocket 3. And I'm getting to the age now, I think, well, maybe a cruiser is in my future. Maybe I'm ready to, to try a cruising motorcycle. So this was on my radar. And uh, as I say, the Rocket 3 was my top cruiser. That was the bike I was going to buy until this came along. Because this is now my top choice for a cruiser motorcycle and not because it's a great cruiser because it's also a great everything else this isn't just a cruiser this isn't just limiting you to a cruiser this is like a gt motorcycle you know this is almost like a grand tourer it's it does every, this this bike blurs the boundaries of what a cruiser should be and that is why I love it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm ready to get a cruiser. I'm like, oh, it's a lot of money, 20 grand to buy a rocket. Am I ready to dip my toe into that cruiser market? Is it going to be just a little bit of a one-trick pony just cruising around? Well, this bike does... You don't have to think that with this, because this does cruising. It also is a brilliant hyper-naked. It handles Ducati Doom panniers for it. You can get a touring screen. This, this is just like... This bike does so much and offers so much that... I can feel like I can dip my toe into that cruiser market because I won't be disappointed because this does everything else as well. Am I babbling? Yes, I think I am. So settle it all down a little bit and let's just talk a little bit about the ergonomics and all that first. So I'm, I'm six foot two, 20 stones, so I'm a big old unit and I fit on this bike nicely. It's a very thin in the middle because it's a V4, it's not very wide, so it's very thin. So your legs are quite tight in, which is brilliant by the way for higher speed stuff on the motorway because you're all tucked in. You don't get any of that legs being forced out and blowing off the back of the bike. You can cruise at 90 on this bike, 90 miles an hour quite unbelievable the feet are forward sort of mid positioned feet but they are forward a little bit the bars are massively wide you know I've got all the weight 
on the bum. The, your bum feels low, you know, it's got that sort of sculpted seat, but it's not as out and out cruiser position as like the Rocket 3. It's sort of an intermediate between a, a hyper naked position and a cruiser. And it's, it's just, just about right to enable this bike to be able to handle and, and respond in the twisties as well. Talking of handling, remember this bike has a 240 section rear tyre. A bike with a 240 section rear tyre has absolutely no right to handle as well as this bike does. This is so good in the twisties. I think you could keep up with any of your mates on any other bike. Now this is so capable. I, I just don't know how Ducati... Whoa, the power! I don't know how Ducati have made this thing handle with the 240 section tyre. It changes direction so quickly, you feel like you've got ultimate amount of grip. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I've ridden naked litre bikes, which don't handle nowhere near <laughs> as well as this thing. And before we go any further, you're probably saying, hello, it's a Ducati. He's got a warning light on it already. The reason that's on is because I've turned off the wheelie control in the sport mode. So you can fully customise all those electronics. One thing Ducati do very, very well is give you the option to customise your modes and all of that. So that's on because I've got the wheelie control off. And because it's turned off in the mode, when I turn the bike on and off, it stays off. I mean, this is a long motorcycle. Not only has it got the massive rear tyre, it's also like, it's long. It's a long bike, you know, it's a cruiser, it's long. So when you open the taps on this thing, you know, it does have really control, but you don't really, it comes up a little bit, the front wheel will dance off the ground, even though it's so long. But this thing just puts all the power. So not only does it handle, I think this is the quickest motorcycle I've ever ridden. Because first and second, you can give it full guns. It's not wheeling because it's long. So normally if you've got a really fast hyper naked or whatever, it will wheelie and it will cut the power and you won't get that full acceleration. Because this is long, it's like you're being catapulted absolutely, oh, it just is so fast, we will show you. But because it's long, it puts that power down and it just hunkers down and oh, goes like stink. And the grunt, I mean mid-range grunt, whoa! Any revs, it just picks up and goes. I love this Gran Turismo engine. I've been critical of the the Desmo version, which is in the Street Fighter and the Panagalia, I can't remember, the Deech, I can't remember what it's called, but the one with the Desmo heads, this doesn't have Desmo heads, this has valve springs. You know, this engine first came out in the new Multistrada, and I love the Multistrada, I love this engine in the Multistrada, and I said at the time, why is it this engine in the Street Fighter? Because it's a much better road bike engine, and that just proves it in this Diavel, because this engine is so responsive, so easy to live with, there's none of that none of that poor fueling at low speed that the street fighter i mean uh, uh, to be honest i have just ridden the new 2023 street fighter and it is much improved compared to last year's one there's a review coming on the new a first ride on the new 2023 street fighter v4s it is better but it's not as well fueled and easy to live with as this gran turismo motor yeah i quite like it as you can tell i quite like this thing in the Multistrada, the engine is super smooth. It's not, I don't think it's as smooth in this as the Multistrada. So if, if you go below 3,000 revs, let's just put it in third, below 3,000 revs, it's, it, it's, a look, it's a little, little bit lumpy, a bit more so than I think it is in the Multistrada. Now that could be sort of gearing, it, it doesn't feel quite as super smooth as it does in the Multi. The gear change can sometimes be a tiny bit lurchy. Now I'm being super critical now. And I, I think it feels much smoother in the Multistrada. So I don't think it's quite as smooth as the Multi. I, I think they've changed things on this. You know, the power delivery has been changed. It's, you know, the mapping's changed. But I do feel it's maybe not quite as perfect from a fueling and gearbox and gear change feel as the Multistrada. I don't know why, it could just be this bike. For a cruiser, this bike is incredibly light. This weighs 211 kilos dry. I think it's 236 kilos wet, and it's got a 20 litre tank. So it's not 
you know, for a cruiser, that's incredible, incredibly light. And that is why this thing, I think, that's one of the reasons why this thing handles so amazingly is they've built this with performance in mind. Ducati hasn't thought, well, let's just build a big cruiser for the cruiser market. They thought, well, let's make a really light, fast, well handling cruiser. And, and oh my God, they pulled that off. Whoa, wheels up. <laughs> wheels off the floor then. The suspension is sort of firmish on this, but it feels pretty supportive. I mean, these roads are pretty, pretty dire down here. And uh, the suspension's okay, you know, it's, it's not Olin's plush, but it's pretty reasonable. You know, I could certainly live with it because you're only sort of half in that cruiser bum down position. You don't get too many whacks through your lower back. You know, it's, it's pretty supportive. Let's give it a little bit through here. The quick shifter and blipper is pretty decent. It can be really smooth, a little bit lumpy at times, but it's, it's a precise sort of shift. But the, just the way it handles and changes direction, I mean, I don't know how they've done it. I don't know how they've done it. The brakes are also incredible. Stylema calipers, the feel from the brakes is one of, is, is good as one of the, you know, the best bikes I've ever ridden. It's got fantastic feel and progression from the front brake and the rear brake's really good as well. I mean, oh, I've not got a bad word to say about this bike, to be honest. And the niggles, for me, I, I do find this switch gear a little bit fiddly to get in and out the mode. Sort of, you've got to push it on the inside here and my big fat fingers, I, I do. I'm getting used to it, but the, the switch gear I find not the easiest to operate. But apart from that oh, there's nothing else i don't like it's even e easy to find neutral you know all of those things it's just oh it's just great i mean look at it here look at the view you have look at the tank the way the tank sculpted in great big vents at the front here i love the placement of the dashboard sort of below the bars there i just think it's a great you just feel so cool riding this bike it's yeah uh, one of the criticisms this bike always had, you know, in the multi and, and the street fighter is the fuel consumption. And, and it, yeah, it's V4s are thirsty, get over it. But what this does have is that rear cylinder deactivation to save a little bit, like the 9% fuel saving or something. But what, what, is, what is great on this bike is it's got a 20 litre fuel tank. So even though it is, it is thirsty, you can easily get 150 to 170 miles range out the tank. So yeah, it's thirsty, but you're not stopping every 100 miles to fill it up like you used to have to on the old Street Fighter. So it's thirsty, but you've got the range, which is what you want, isn't it? And it's got a fuel gauge. I've got a miles to empty here. It says I've got 186 miles left in the tank. Probably a tiny bit optimistic, optimistic, but it, does, it is pretty reasonable from a fuel consumption point of view. It's also got cruise control not adaptive you know regular cruise control but one thing it doesn't have it doesn't have the option to like push the throttle forward to deactivate the cruise control so you've got to touch the brakes or turn it off which is a bit weird i don't know why it hasn't got the throttle you push forward to deactivate but it's got cruise control it's also there's no restrictions around the cruise control you can put it on under 30 miles an hour if you want you know, which is great i hate it when they manufacturers bring out cruise control and then chuck all sorts of restrictions on when you can use it I want to use it, I've got cruise control, I want to use it, well, I want to use it. All right, let's take it up the hill climb. It may be a little bit damp, so it always does take a while to dry out this bit of road. But believe me, this is a fine, fine, fine handling motorcycle. In a cruise, you're sort of locked into the seat a little bit, but you can almost, that's a bit wet. You can sort of move out of the seat a bit on this as well, if you really need, but I mean, there's no issues with ground clearance, not on the road. I mean, I've not had anything touched down. Oh, look at that power out the corner. But you, it will lay down, you know? It's such a fine, it's a Ducati. Of course it bloody handles. But there's loads of ground clearance. And on the Rocket 3, you would never keep up with this thing on the Rocket. This out, will outhandle the Rocket any day of the week. It, the super nakeds couldn't keep up with this. <laughs> 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 ah, the brakes are so good as well. Oh, this thing, this thing! Ducati, what are you doing to me? 
What are you doing to me? As soon as I'm happy with my fleet of motorcycles, you bring out this. The other thing I don't like with this bike is it's 23 and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> it's very expensive. So there she is, the new Ducati Diavel V4. What a stunning, 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 stunning filthy motorcycle. So starting at the front, you've got that headlight, you know, very similar to the old Diavel headlight with the little LEDs around the outside. Looks really cool. A little screen here and that's sort of the way air sort of deflects. I think that's one of the reasons why it's quite comfortable at speed because it sort of deflects air off. And you can actually change this and get a big touring screen here if you wanted. The indicators are mounted up on the handlebars, which is sort of unusual, but uh, cool. I really like that. The front wheel is like the rear wheel with this sort of diamond cut edges. One thing I don't like, this is all a little bit sort of floppy. A little bit sort of floppy. And I guess that's the thing when you've got you know, the way this engine is sort of attached just to the little bit of frame here, all of these sort of fittings and um, cowlings are sort of just bolted to the engine and you know, so everything's sort of bolted onto each other. So things do move around a little bit. Here is that V4 motor. In the Diavel, it's all blacked out. You know, normally you have that like bronze finish on this engine, but it's all, it's all blacked out in the Diavel, which I really like the look of. Another thing I really like it is, is most of the pipes and wires on this one have been hidden away sort of behind the cowling and stuff. I and mean, we've got a few wires here, but that, that's it really. Whereas on the Street Fighter, everything seemed to be more visible. So it looks neater. It's a much neater uh, engine on this. Another thing I've noticed is this piece here is actually plastic. So there's like a cover here. And I've not noticed any heat because this engine's renowned for running a little bit hot, but they've got like this, this is all the rear cylinders are enclosed in like this plastic and the whole bike's enclosed. And I think they've, they've reduced the sort of heat soak. I've not noticed the seat getting hot, which can happen on the Street Fighter and the Panigale. You know, it's a much cooler running engine. And I think it's because of all this enclosure they've built, built around it and sort of here as well, just to sort of keep that heat away from the rider. And that really works. One of the biggest sort of design features of this bike is this sort of big quad exit um, sort of tail box. I mean, it's, it is one big sort of collector unit and it's a big, massive, heavy thing. But I mean, I really like this sort of quad exit exhaust system. I hope that when the aftermarket people start bringing out exhausts, they retain this sort of four pipe exit. I think it looks really, really good. It's a little bit 1990s minigun. I do, I do confess, or Ed 209. Here is that incredible rear wheel. I mean, the design of this rear wheel is amazing. A 240 section uh, Pirelli Rosso Corsa tire. I'd hate to think how much that costs and you're gonna get through them as well with the amount of power this bike puts down. One of my favorite design features of this bike is the tail lights and this tail section where it's all sort of shows through these little holes it just looks so cool from the back. I mean, look at that. I mean, that, how cool is that back end? The rear pillion pegs like fold up. <laughs> There's the rear pillion pegs. Quite an interesting little design. And actually the rear seat on the bike is really wide. So I actually think it'd be pretty comfortable for a pillion. Let's have a look at the engine from the other side. As you can see, everything's enclosed. It covers over the water pipes. You know, it's all pretty neat looking, isn't it? The dashboard is also very nice on this. You know, that, that normal Ducati layout, really clear, classy. As I say, distance to empty. One thing you can't do on this is you can't adjust the engine braking control. You can on like the Street Fighter and the Panigale. There's no engine braking control on this, but it's got all of the other electronics that the Street Fighter has. Plus it's got a fuel gauge, more importantly. I do like the big intakes here, like really muscular, sort of shoulders on the bike. And you know, from the front, it looks mean. From every angle, I think this bike looks aggressive. It looks mean, it sounds angry. <sighs> I like it. I like it very much. How, how can I afford one? How can I buy one? I want one. <sighs> if the H2 wasn't so special and wasn't sort of still appreciating, I'd, I'd definitely chop it in for one of these because this is just such a usable motorcycle and it delivers that fun as well and it, it, when you want to cruise it does it so well with that new engine it's so smooth I mean you can just let's just bang on the cruise control ah this is not a little problem if I've got the wheelie control turned off it won't let me use the cruise control when because the wheelie controls off and I've got a, a warning can't use the cruise control when the wheelie controls off 
don't know why, but you can't. So, uh, yeah, you wouldn't normally have that issue because you don't really need, you need the wheelie control on. This isn't a wheelie bike anyway. I just wanted to, do, I quite like it plain enough. But yeah, the cruise control is great. And when you do want the Gist Poodle, oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's got a touring mode, it's got an urban mode. But to be honest, I found the sport mode, even in sport, just poodling's beautiful. There's no need to go fanning around swapping the modes. Just leave it in sport. Let's do a, a roll-on pull, just to show you how this thing accelerates. Let's do fourth gear. Fourth gear at 30 miles an hour, and this is slightly uphill. There we go, well, well over 60. Let's also show you the performance of this thing. First gear. It does wheelie in first gear when you open the taps. That was a poor attempt there. I have to do that again. That was uh, hit the rev limit a few times there. Oh, I'm steaming up. I'm steaming up. The way this thing hooks up, truly incredible. It may be a serious sum of money, but if you've got a multi bike garage where you've got a bike for cruising, a sports bike, a super naked, you can bin all those and just get one of these and it will do the job that all those bikes are doing. Ah, that, that's, that's, that's what's so great about this. It's just blurring the boundaries between genres of bikes, you know. It does, it does so much so well, this. I can sell the H2, keep the GSX-R for track. I mean, the only thing this bike probably couldn't do, track days. <laughs> you could do a track day on it and you'd be fast, but you know, it's not really a, a track day bike, but it could do it if you absolutely positively had to take it on track. It could do it. In first gear, with the wheelie control off, it's, it's going to come up a little bit. Let's try. Woo! <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I mean, first to second, it's coming up. Only very gently, that's the thing, it's so long, you know, on a normal bike, a short, you know, normal wheelbase bike, that'll be, whoa, wheelie control, cut it, oh, I'll shut the throttle. You know, I'm pinning it, it's coming up like that. <laughs> it's driving forward at incredible pace. Definitely the chop's pat of approval for the Diavel. Another thing which is a, is a nice little surprise, oh, this guy's coming in here, it's actually got a decent steering lock as well. Sorry mate, I'm causing chaos here. Cheers. Thank you. But the steering lock is good. You know, was, and because all the weight is quite a low bike and it's light with 236 kilos fully fueled, 211 unfueled, it's not a heavy bike to wheel it in and out of the garage and manoeuvre it. It feels just like a normal sort of super naked. It doesn't feel like a heavy machine. Whereas the Rocket 3 is a 300 kilo bike, it feels heavy to manoeuvre around. This, this just feels lightweight. You know, that, that's, that's a consideration. Especially when you're getting a little bit older. And I, my next bike, I want a bike which is going to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, I love 51. I don't want to be buying bikes every, all the time. I want to get something which I can keep until I give up riding. You know, I can, I can ride throughout the rest of my life. And, I think this, this fits the bill, because it's not too heavy, it cruises, it does everything, and, and you know, this suits an older rider, I think, really well, or oh, younger rider, this suits so many different people. Oh, look at that drive! Yeah, it's good. If you hadn't realised, it's bloody good. So there we go, the Ducati Diavel V4. I don't know what more I could say, I mean, this is a an incredible motorcycle you know the only niggles is that the switch the switch gets a little bit fiddly that's it I, I mean this is a bike i want there's not many bikes i want this is a bike i want you know i'm almost i don't want to rave about this too much because i don't want everyone to go and buy one of these i don't want to see these everywhere i want the exclusivity of this if i were to buy one but it's, it's so good everyone's gonna end up with one and they're gonna go down the bike but everyone's gonna have one <laughs> So actually this is rubbish. Don't buy this bike. Don't buy it. Let me buy one and look cool on my own. 
Coming up, we have the full comparison between the Diavel and the Rocket 3. Me and Greg have done a full comparison video comparing this Diavel to the Rocket 3 Chrome Edition. And these bikes actually cost exactly the same money. When the Rocket's in the Chrome, it's the same price as the Diavel. So if you're really interested in this Diavel, you don't want to miss our comparison. And we'll we take you through the differences, the riding differences between the bikes, how they feel, and which one we would both have you know, given the pick of one of these motorcycles. So if that sounds of interest, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, guys.